to Kensington is really a dark retelling and a relook at the story of Peter Pan that we've all come to know and love. I think the thing that's different uh, between East of Kensington and other Peter Pan uh, stories is just it's grounded in realism. What we're doing is taking what is known as a Peter Pan movie and kind of twisting it. And so instead of assuming that, you know, everyone did live happily ever after, East of Kensington explores the other option. It's not supposed to be a sequel of the original story that Jane Barry wrote. Essentially what it is is a reinterpretation. We see definitely a loss of innocence, a more cynical retelling. What we're trying to do with East of Kensington is really create something completely unique and uh, tell it from a completely different perspective. And that's really where the dark elements of the story come in. Looking at some of the questions that kind of go unanswered and overlooked in a normal fairy tale kind of world, which is what happens in the real world if this ever took place. A lot of people know the Disney version of Peter Pan. We really wanted to stay as true to J.M. Barry's original character as we possibly could. It's not designed to tear and eat away at the core of what is Peter Pan, but to really accentuate elements that J.M. Barry instilled in his story that maybe people have turned a blind eye to. It's not just a retelling of a story, it's a reimagining of what that story means. Peter goes back to London in search of Wendy. He returns in selfish reasons to bring back a person that he basically abandoned. I think what is so fascinating about the character of Peter Pan is how deep that character really is. He wants to never grow up, not just because it's the fun thing to do, but because it is the worst thing that could ever happen to him. You know, it could be the beginning of something totally new with the entire Peter Pan uh, genre and style. I feel like because East of Kensington is taking this new approach to the Peter story, I feel like um, because we're reintroducing this to the audience, this is something that the audience is going to be interested and intrigued in and want to find out, you know, why are things different in this story? Why did the filmmakers decide to take this new approach? Just from a production design standpoint, we are really, really pumped about getting to basically build these locations, build these sets and these places. And some of these, you know, locations like the nursery and the home underground are very iconic and be able to approach it with our own ideas and our kind of our own style. And things are bleak, things are very dark, um, desaturated and very grimy, grungy, realistic, and which is very jarring when halfway before that in the film we see Neverland, which is very beautiful. Well, East of Kensington is a very visual effects heavy film. You know, we have to create the London skyline from nothing, um, and we have a CGI character in Tinkerbell. Having a producing mentality when creating this project, it was very important to me that we didn't bite off more than we could chew. We don't cut corners. We are we stay very well communicated within all of our departments from casting to production value to visual effects. Every aspect of this production we want to get to the highest level we possibly can and we really are striving for excellence in all fields. Everyone's here because they want to tell the story because, you know, they connect with the story, they believe in the story, or the story does something for them. We're all so committed and so dedicated and really making this happen. I think that's really what's going to propel the film forward and make it really successful. This isn't a film that we just created spur of the moment. This is a movie that we literally have been waiting two years to make. This is kind of the grand finale. We've hit the ground running and we're giving it all that we've got. What makes this a student film is that the people making it are still in school, but that's about it. It's about as professional as it gets. We're reaching out to some effects companies in the industry to get them a part of the project. Something from the beginning that Kellen really wanted to do was make this, um, you know, bigger than life. We are calling upon all of our contacts, everyone that we know in the business and asking them for professional advice, for a mentorship, to make sure that we're going in the right direction. We don't want to settle for just uh, mediocre or even just the resources that we have at our school. We want to go above and beyond. We have been so blessed to have such an amazing fan base through our social media. These past months we've just watched things grow and blossom and we've connected with people and we've heard their stories and we've seen firsthand what Peter Pan means to people. You know, if I wanted to invest in something that later on I could point back to later and say, you know what, I was a part of that, that was really cool. Years down the road, you go into the theater and go, you know, I funded one of their early pictures and I think, you know, how cool would that be to say, I knew them when, so I think it's definitely worth it.